The Green Neck system is a flexible yet easy to do, well, system for performing amazing feats of mentalism. But it's more than just a system or method. It's a way of life. Oh, okay, maybe that's going too far. But it is such a flexible method that I could see it pervading every area of your mentalism. It can be used for close-up, parlor, stage, impromptu, and even virtual performances. Did I mention that it's easy to do? The original principle that prompted the system has been covered by many well-known magicians such as Carl Fulves, Martin Gardner, Louis Jones, Steve Beam, Harry Lorraine, Bruce Bernstein, Patrick Redford, more on that in a second, Brian Brushwood, and others, each with their own take. The basis for all of these creations, as well as the Green Neck system, is Bob Hummer's mathematical three-card Monty, aka the Hummer Principle. The original is great, but it had some limitations. For example, it required you to visually know or check some information, but it was totally self-working. The Green Neck system goes beyond the original in at least two ways while maintaining the ease of use. The first is that you don't have to know the object layout necessarily. And the second way that I believe that this goes beyond the original is in giving some engaging presentations that give you great motivations for why you're asking the participant to do what they're doing that makes the system work. I was alerted while I was talking about this book that the system for mixing things is very similar to something that's already been in print and in lecture and video form by Patrick Redford. In this second edition of the book, he is credited in the back with his contributions to the method, although the author claims independent creation. Maybe you're dubious about this system, so let me give a little example. If you want to try this at home with me, you will need a spoon, a fork, and a knife. Once you have those three objects, set the table for yourself. The fork on the left, the spoon above your plate, and the knife on the right. You know, just like your mom taught you. Mentally choose one of the pieces of silverware. Maybe you're drawn to the defensive properties of the knife, the openness and giving nature of the spoon, or maybe you just like the symmetry of the fork. Now that you're thinking of your favorite piece of silverware, we're going to mix them up just a little bit. Move the two pieces of silverware that you did not mentally choose. So your piece of silverware will stay where it is. The other two will switch places. Now, I couldn't know what you chose, but I want you to switch the knife and the fork. Good. We've mixed them. Are you happy? I'm happy. But if the green neck system has just worked for you, I now know that your piece of silverware is in the middle above the plate. Crazy, right? Sound off down in the comments below if that just blew your mind. So what do you get in the green neck system? Is it just the simple demonstration that I just gave to you? In a word, no. In this 220 plus page hardback book, you get a ton of variety, which actually really surprised me. There are dinner stunts, chair tests, predictions, living and dead tests. There's a psychometry routine, a couple of remote viewing effects, which is basically being able to sense something using someone else's senses. And by the way, one of these remote viewing routines can actually be done over the phone. Another routine that has to be done in person has your participant mixing different glasses of beverages, taking a sip of one, and you're able to tell them which beverage they're enjoying. There's a witch hand effect, which could actually be a great lead in for an alternate effect. In fact, Don uses it as a part of a longer tequila hustler routine. Of course, there are some more obvious applications with mind reading and lie detection routines, a version of the original Hummer card routine, and there are even two Russian roulette styled routines. At the other end of the spectrum, he gives you a way to perform this type of routine using the system for children of any age. In short, there's a ton of adaptability to the system, and once you understand how it works, you will come up with many, many uses. Did I mention that the system itself is essentially self-working? That doesn't mean you won't have to think to perform some of these effects, but there are a really good mix of versions. Some of them will challenge you to keep track of a few objects, but trust me when I tell you it's nothing too strenuous. But the vast majority of routines in the book don't require anything other than a simple tracking mechanism you can do with your fingers. And those are the most complex routines. Not complex at all. The simplest routines in the book effectively work themselves. I should point out that all of the routines do use three objects at most, with the exception of the witch hand routine, which begins with two participants and therefore four hands. What I love is that each one of these routines is completely customizable. 
In fact, that's what happened when I was reading through these routines. My mind was going absolutely crazy with all of the possibilities, and I'll share a few of those in just a second. While the book is filled with routines that are ready for use, you don't actually have to use any of the routines. You can simply use the system to allow your participants or your audience to mix up some objects and then lead into your favorite routine, adding another layer of deception to an already great magic or mentalism bit. In fact, the more you already know from your library, the more deadly this system can be because it allows you to layer subtlety on subtlety the system is an outline, but there are many broad applications. If you end up purchasing this, I want to share a few of the ideas that just came to my mind in just one reading through the book. If you get this and you're considering doing one of the chair test routines, why not pair it with David Regal's impossible envelope from Approaching Magic? That way, not only will you be able to predict the outcome of the chair test routine, you'll also be able to know intimate details about the participant who ends up with that prediction. And if you perform the note under the cup routine, which in the write-up uses just a piece of paper, why not use a borrowed bill and write your prediction on the bill? Then you have this comedic byplay with borrowing the bill, you get some funny beats along the way, and you can set up the premise as gambling the participants' money with the audience. If you use some sort of memorized deck or a stack, there are a ton of possibilities that should come to your mind here as well. In short, you'll find dozens of applications for this system, even if you only ever perform casually. The book is $60 at retail, but don't forget that you can get it for less than $55 shipped if you take advantage of the discount this week with Don. If you perform any type of mentalism or are at any stage in your mentalism career, then I recommend this book. I definitely believe you'll find something that you can use and perform. I know I have. If you'd like to know more about the books I recommend to get going with mentalism, be sure to check out this video. And if you'd like to see more about the crediting we discussed in this video, click down here to watch this video. Special thanks to Doug and Scott for their generous contributions via the super thanks. I appreciate it, guys. It really means a lot. As always, my erudite friends, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, keep reading.